In this lesson, we'll use Auto Layout to build a responsive button element that automatically grows and shrinks as its label changes. We'll then turn the button into a main component so we can reuse it in other designs. Here's the button we're going to use. To recreate this design, it seems like we could use a rectangle for the background, a text layer for the label, and a frame to keep it all together. The outcome might look okay, but it won't really work if we need to change the button label in the future. Instead, we'll use Auto Layout to create a frame around our text layer and give it a fill to act as the surface of the button. Auto layout helps you create designs that automatically adjust as you make changes, saving you time and making your designs responsive and adaptable. You can apply auto layout to frames to turn them into flexible containers that allow you to organize design elements, adjust the spacing between them, and quickly insert new content into existing designs. Once applied, you can use the auto layout properties to determine how the frame and its child layers interact with one another. The resizing properties control how the frame's height and width will respond when its child layers change. The direction property determines which way the child layers will flow inside the frame. The gap property lets you specify the spacing between all child layers and the alignment property determines how those layers are aligned within the frame. Lastly, the padding property controls the space between the frame's boundary and its child layers. As you can see, Auto Layout is a powerful feature with a lot of moving parts. Let's walk through some examples to better understand how these properties work. Here is a list item designed using Auto Layout. We set the frame's width to hug contents, so it will grow or shrink depending on the length of the label. We also set the frame's direction to flow horizontally, so the image and the label will remain side by side. And use the gap property to define a consistent space between them. Auto layout can also be used to build more complex designs such as multi-dimensional layouts with elements that flow in different directions. Take this recipe list example. The parent frame is set to flow vertically and uses hug contents to automatically expand or shrink based on the number of list items. Within the parent frame, each individual list item flows horizontally ensuring that the text and image remain side by side. If we add more list items to the parent frame, it will grow vertically to accommodate them without impacting the layout of the child layers, eliminating the need for any manual adjustments. The resizing options you use will depend on your desired behavior. When designing for a single device type, you may set your parent frame to have fixed dimensions so it'll always match the device's resolution and dimensions. But if your designs need to work on multiple screen sizes, you can use fill container so that your nested objects always stretch the full width or height of their parent frame as it resizes. You can also combine different resizing properties to further customize how an object behaves. For example, imagine an app notification. To make sure the frame stays a consistent width while being able to accommodate a longer message, we can set its width to fixed and its height to hug contents so it can grow vertically to fit a longer notification. Together, these auto layout properties help your designs be more flexible as changes happen throughout the design process and beyond.
Now that we better understand what Auto Layout does, let's use it to build our button. We'll start by adding a new text layer that will serve as our button's label. With the text tool enabled, click on the canvas and type button. Use the properties in the typography section to change the font weight to semi-bold, the font size to 18, and the line height to auto. Leave the font family set to enter and the alignment set to center. Now let's add auto layout. Select the text layer and use the keyboard shortcut Shift A. Let's take a look at what happened. Figma automatically created a frame around the text layer and applied auto layout to it. Double click on the frame name and rename it to button. We'll adjust the auto layout properties in a bit, but first let's style our button. Double click on the text layer inside the button frame Type F in the field next to the color swatch in the fill section and press enter. Figma will take the single F we entered and assume we want to fill the hex code with only Fs, which sets the fill to pure white. Next, select the button frame and click the plus in the fill section to add a fill. Type zero in the field next to the color swatch and press enter. Just like before, Figma takes the zero we entered and fills out the rest of the field with zeros and changes the fill to black. Finally, let's round the corners of our button to give it a friendlier look. In the appearance section, change the corner radius to eight. It's looking a lot more button-like. If you're interested in learning more about button design best practices, check out our Design Your First Button Project on the Figma Help Center. Now we can start adjusting the auto layout properties to customize how our button looks and feels. You may notice that the layout section in the right sidebar has changed to auto layout and now includes some additional properties. The dimensions fields also changed and are now resizing fields. In addition to being able to set a fixed width and height for the frame, we now have the option to set the parent frame to hug contents, which means that it will automatically resize as the button label grows or shrinks. Test this out for yourself by changing the button label to continue or next. Because we'll use this button element again in different contexts, we'll leave the resizing properties set to Hug Contents for maximum flexibility. That way, if we need to change the button's label or translate it into a different language, we won't have to worry about manually resizing it. Finally, let's talk about padding. You may be wondering why Figma set the padding to 10. Because there weren't any other layers around our text layer to indicate the spacing we want, Figma automatically used our big nudge preference, which is set to 10. If we had an existing frame around the text layer before applying auto layout, Figma would maintain the distance we had between the text layer and frame. Let's change the horizontal padding to 16 to make the button's width slightly longer than its height. Since our final design will include several buttons, let's turn the button into a main component. This will give us the ability to add reusable instances to our designs so we won't have to recreate the button from scratch. To turn the button into a main component, select the button frame and click Create Component in the right sidebar, or use the keyboard shortcut. You'll notice the button is now inside a purple bounding box and the icon in the layer section has also changed to a four diamonds icon. This indicates the layer is a main component. We'll learn more about the power of main components and instances in the next video. Before moving on, 
Make sure you've styled your button, set the auto layout properties, and turned it into a main component.